Hello, welcome back to Heiko Tutorial. In the following videos, I will be introducing to you the variable widgets one by one. And in this video, I will start with string. This video will cover three parts. First, an overview. Second, when and where to use string widgets. And third, the properties and actions. Let's start with some basic information on string widgets. So a string widget stores a character or a string. And if you store numbers inside a string variable, the numbers will be turned into strings. Actions of a string widget include setting value and adding characters, deleting characters, slicing itself, splitting, and searching for characters or substrings. Next, let's see together where and when to use string widgets. So we usually use them for storing user information. For example, their ID numbers, alias, and URLs for profile pictures. An important thing here is to differentiate the usage of string variables to that of numeric variables. For example, we usually store users' ID numbers and phone numbers in strings rather than in actual numbers. I will come back to that after we learn more about numeric variables. Moving forward, I will show you the properties and actions of string variables. When we first meet a new widget, we always learn about it using its events, properties, and actions. But for variable widgets, they do not have any triggers in their event panel. So we'll be looking at its properties and actions only. And now we are going to the editor. In this new project, I'm going to first add a page. We're not going to design any pages for today, but it is a good habit to always hold whatever widgets you have inside a page. And how do I add a string variable? First, select a parent, and go to the widgets bar to look for the widgets in yellow. And the first one with the text symbol is what exactly we are looking for, a string variable. And when I hover over this, string variable widget. You can see it has property, action, but it has no triggers. This means when I add an event to the string, I'll have nothing to choose from. Therefore, we won't be using events for variable widgets. Let's take a look at its property panel. Here we have the value of it and the value's type. For variable widgets, the value is their essence. After all, variable widgets are used for storing and manipulating the values. Let me enter something here. And then I'm going to use the button to log the variable's value to console. Select page and add a button. Name it log and add an event to it. When it is clicked, the target will be the string. And for the string variables action, we can find console log. We have this console log option for every variable widget. It is the same as selecting system, console log, and selecting from tree. It is a shortcut of this action. This is an action that will be used by us very often. It helps us to keep track of variable values during development. Go to Preview, and then Inspect. Click the Log button, and it says in the console, the value of string 1, followed by, this is the value of my variable which is the value that I have written here in the property panel. It also allows us to select a type for this value. For example, I can select color or image. This doesn't change the fact that string variables are used for storing characters, strings, or text. Because, for example, when I want to change the color of an element, it is expecting this hexadecimal code which is actually a string. So if I change this type to color, 
The editor will automatically offer me this palette, so it will be more convenient for me to set its value. It is the same for images. When we upload an image, We display the image by retrieving it through its address. An address is a string that can be stored in the variable. So by selecting this type to image, it gives us a shortcut of uploading an image. I will change it back to none and give it a value and going on to show you the actions of string variables. Let's give it a value of ABC EF. I'm going to add one button for calling each of the actions. So the first one would be set as set value. I'm sure from the previous videos you're already familiar with this one. So when the button is clicked, select target as the string variable and set its value. Here you can set the value as you like, for example, just new value here. It is recommended to put what you type inside a pair of quotes, because without them, you will find some of your words turned into blue. Characters in blue are no longer regarded as simply strings, but are detected as some keywords in coding language, and this will give you an unexpected outcome. Also, when you want to use punctuation marks, this will give you an error code. You can see now the box has a red border. Putting the value in quotes will help you solve these problems. Go to Preview. And when I first print the value, it says these letters plus numbers, which is the original value we've written here. And going back, click set value and print again. It is changed to the new value. This is also a reminder that values stored in variables cannot be recovered. After getting a new value, the previous one will be lost. Let's go on to the next action. Which will be insert substrings. The target still is the string and insert substring by position. And inside the settings it allows us to choose to add the substring to the head or tail of the original string. Take head for example and notice the index starts from 0 instead of 1. And the value? Go to preview and... See the original string and insert, log again, and it adds the hello to the first character starting from the head. And we can add it to the tail. This one use the second character. Now it adds the substring after the second character, counting from the tail. And next we have delete. So another button. Delete. For the actions of delete, we have remove substring by position or by its value. Let's first look at this by position option. Still, we can count from either head or tail. And then we have index and length. Take this as an example. This will remove two characters starting from the second one, which means it will remove B and C. Let's preview. The original string is this one, and delete log again, and now B and C are gone. The other delete action is to remove by value. 
this action will find the value that I'm going to type here inside the original string and remove it. If there is more than one such substring, it will remove all of them. For example, I will type an L here. And remember I can use this insert to insert a word of hello. And I will remove both the L's in the word hello. The original value is this, and insert, we have this hello here, and delete. Now it change to only HEO. And then we have the action of slicing a string. Again, select the string, and slice. It requires two inputs of start from and end at. Let me change this string a little bit. For example, 0, 1, target. And this has uh, six characters, so 8 and 9. So to cut off the numbers and only retain the target, I will start from index 2 to 7. Let's preview. See the original string, slice it, and this will give us the target. And next we can generate random strings using string variable. And there, random string. And you can set the length and type that you want it to generate. For example, I'd like a string of 8 characters. And the type you can choose from number or letter or both. Generate a random code. There it is. Another one. So this will give us a random string of 8 characters containing both letters and numbers. This action of generating random strings is very helpful for encryption, validation, or to generate QR codes. And then we have the search substring action. Now I will skip this split string action because this will need the help of an array. I will leave it until we learn more about the array variable. This session is the same as what we have when removing substring by value. For the string 1, we have this 0, 1 target 8, 9. So we can look for this target. And this action comes with a callback, so when it is completed, we can go to the console. And in this drop-down list, you can find the result of the search. Above is the search result. We can first log the original value and search returns us 2. Above is the search result. This means the first character of what we are looking for corresponds to the index of 2. And this is the end of this video on string variables. Thank you very much for watching.